Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at the XI35 Pro HD. This is uh, a quad from Oddity RC, and Oddity RC might be a new drone company name that you might not have heard of. And right off the bat, I want to thank uh, Jimmy M. I won't use his last name, just his last initial. Uh, I appreciate your efforts. He uh, has apparently been a fan of their products, which is mainly featured over in the Far East. And uh, he decided that he thought they needed to be known more globally, I guess. That's kind of what I think the intention was. But he did all the legwork of getting in contact with Auto the RC. Auto the RC and I finally connected, and uh, then they they sent this product. You know, 3.5 inch is a little bit big for this micro channel, but uh, I'm pretty glad that I got my hands on this one. Not everything is perfect, as is always the case, but uh, let me just tell you right off the bat, it doesn't really fly like a sin whoop, but it is a sin whoop. Oh my. Jumping into the specs, the motors, they are out of the RC Stream Motors 2006 and they're 2150 kV. Yes, this is a 6S quad. And on those motors are the Gemfan D90S. They're the tri bladed, three and a half inch props. The all in one flight controller is the Hack RC F722. It's a 40 amp all in one with the ICM 42688 gyro. Of course, for FPV, we've got the DJI 03 camera and VTX, where the USB port and the SD card slot are available without having to do any disassembly. Does come with Auto the RC branded dual straps. The dual VTX antennas are the Rush Cherry left handed polarized. The receiver, which is mounted right up in there, in my particular case, as you could probably tell from this big old long T antenna, is the Crossfire, but also available in Express LRS whether it's 2.4 gigahertz or 915 megahertz. The recommended battery is this colorful Cotter 1300 milliamp six cell battery. The front end here has a mount for an external HD camera if you wish to do that. Kind of looks like a cat from there, Cyclops cat. We've got a new battery mat down here. I haven't seen this color type before. Uh, what's most interesting about this, and at least in my opinion, is that it is kind of tacky, but it's not sticky, if that makes any sense. Of course, there is no uh, uh, pattern on the top to give it some extra grip, but yeah, I think this is pretty good stuff. Not only do we have a 3D mount that holds our DJI 03 camera, we also have 3D printed mounts for our antennas on both sides. And to my surprise, they're pretty rigid for a 3D print of some sort. We also have a holster that's 3D printed for our receiver as well as a holder for our antenna, which you probably saw already. And the last 3D print, it's gonna be these little pieces down here. And they are TPU, those are not hard. The soldering on this looks pretty dadgum good. And yeah, as you can see, mine's dirty because I've been flying it hard. It comes with an extra battery mat. Inside our accessory bag, we get an extra standoff, some extra screws. I probably could have put these over the top of those, but I didn't. Uh, various things that you might need, should they fall out or otherwise be needed. We do get an extra set of props, and we also get a sheet of stickers. Each one of these is individual stickers, by the way. Carbon fiber is beefy and thick, 3.5 millimeters thick. And motor post to motor post, I'm getting 152 millimeters. Quad without battery or external HD camera weighs 330 grams. And that recommended battery is 196 grams. And because math is hard, all up weight is 426 grams. It should be noted that in all the flight footage you're gonna see, I am using the Tango 2, and this is not my preferred radio. So you might see me a little less uh, precise. I don't think these gimbals are as good as the AG-01. I know I'm gonna make some people mad. This is the pro version with the uh, sticks that fold over, and I have a heck of a time disarming with these buttons up top. Kind of the main reasons why I don't use this regularly. Okay, we have some slight wind and a very overcast day. 11 miles an hour of the wind with some wind gusts that might get up to 14, 15 miles an hour. But that doesn't matter. This thing does not care about that. For two reasons. Well, for two reasons that 
I'm pretty certain of. One is the weight at 426 grams. It's gonna take some higher winds to bother this thing too much. And in my opinion, this thing is tuned really well. And that's one of the reasons why I think uh, if you like to fly sin whoops and you like to fly them aggressively, this is the one to get. At least if you're gonna be flying it outside in a space that's appropriate, something like mine or even bigger. If you like sin whoops and you like having that prop protection out there for a little bit of extra safety, peace of mind, and you're looking at a quad like this, I think this is the one to have. It flies better than the three inch sin whoops I've been flying and the three and a half inch sin whoops. Uh, this one is tuned very well. You're gonna find in all the different little things that I've already shown you in the little quick snippet sort of flight that I already shot in the video, as well as this fuller, faster flight. And typically with these, I start with the slower fight, flight. I don't think that's necessary. I, well, I'm gonna do it, we'll do the slower flight because you're probably interested in that. I'm sure it's that's valid. But I really enjoyed spending my time flying this thing just as fast as I can. Now, there is a drawback. The camera angle is limited. That Cyclops cat look mount up front does limit the amount of camera angle that you can put up there. And it is tuned pretty specifically to this battery. Of course, I weighed the battery separately, so if you have a battery in that weight that's 6S, you should be fine. If you have a battery that's a little bit lighter, you'll probably also be fine. And then you can offset that weight with an ex external HD camera, if that's something that you're into or you want to do. But if you're going to be adding a lot of the weight, I can't really validate the impact it might have on the tune or performance. Because while I did take it on one uh, aggressive flight with a broken uh, naked GoPro, that doesn't add as much weight as say, a full-size GoPro, which this will have no problems flying around with whatever a full-size GoPro with its battery weigh. It's just, it's got plenty of power, it's got plenty of torque, it's 6S, it'll do fine. But I cannot validate the impacts of all the different weights of external HD cameras because I do think this thing, and hopefully it comes out in the flight, that it's tuned very well. We don't have excessive prop wash, we don't have the wobbles at the top of uh, zero throttle moves like we've seen a number of times in not only sin whoops, but we've also seen that in quads that didn't have prop protection, which is really bizarro. But even when you come down too flat out of punches, minimal prop wash. I'm really impressed with the tune, and it's probably just not all the tune. It's probably the combination of parts, uh, the aerodynamics of the uh, frame, as well as the prop protection. It just it comes together all nicely in this package, and I really, really want to look into their other projects. I'm, you know, interested in their smaller products, and thankfully, and hopefully you will be too. Uh, if you look online, I did a quick search for Out of the RC. You will find some videos. I don't think you'll find any long format review videos. I didn't go through them all, of course. I think they're mainly either foreign language videos or they're uh, videos of just kind of flight footage or introductions, snipped up sort of stuff. Um, so in some regards, this might be the first time they've kind of been fully reviewed. I don't know of a better term to put on it. Um, if you consider me a, a reviewer, I consider myself just a guy that likes to fly, that's a hobbyist that just likes to fly, and I happened to start making videos seven years ago. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't want to hit this too hard. I won't give you the sales pitch. Uh, it is DJI 03. It is expensive. But when it comes to three and a half inch sin whoops, and probably even a three inch, if you're looking at a three incher, I think this is the one to have. Unless you're looking to fly inside or a really tight space, or there's some other reason that you wouldn't want to look at this product. Uh, I can't quite identify it because it, it could be uh, a personal preference on uh, buying from the Far East. And as I mentioned that, they are actually looking at getting a service center going here in the US. Uh, there isn't a finalized deal on that yet, so I don't want to talk about that publicly, uh, but that's something to look forward to, and I hope as soon as they finalize that, they publish that. Uh, um, I will ask them after the review. I like to keep kind of the communication during the review process to a minimum, uh, but I will ask them after the review how things are going in their negotiations. Uh, hopefully it comes out in this flight footage. I'm seeing myself in the flight footage. I've watched this a bunch of times. Just kind of almost like randomly fine. Uh, because it's just so controllable. It goes where I want to go. It doesn't feel anywhere as heavy as I thought it would feel in the air, which is, is surprising to me. At, at 426 grams, I really thought, especially being a guy that likes to fly micros that might only come in at 50 grams, that I would really feel it and, and have to really adjust uh, to how this flies. But it just it just flies really well. 
I, I just I don't know what else to say to impress upon you how impressed I am with this product. If you're looking at this product and you think, oh, he'll be giving that away in three months. I really, really don't think so. I mean, I might give it away just be, to, to sweeten the pot or... I, no, I just don't think I would give it away. I think this is one I want to have in my quad toolbox uh, for filming outside around my kids or my family or neighbors or what have you. Oh, I should mention this prop protection. Now, the first time I saw this style of prop protection, I believe, came on the Darwin FPV Cine 8. But I think... These companies that have now adopted this style of prop protection, they might have got it from Art of the Art, Art of the RC. Art of the RC was founded in 2021, as nearly as I can find, and uh, there's there's two people that are mainly heading up the company, so it's a small business. Oh, I'm coming in for the landing. I'm gonna be quiet right now. Jeez, oh, jeez. <laughs> Poor thing. I can't disarm this thing. It's fine. Another disarm. Ah, that's better. Oh, but I went the battery too low now. <laughs> okay, now this will be the slower flight, and I want to finish my thought about this uh, style of prop protection. I, I don't want to stake that it's certain, but it seems like there's potential that out of the RC came up with this material and this prop protection design before we started seeing it on uh, more commonly reviewed products. Uh, put it that way. Um, so I guess we have them to thank for that. Um, they might also be a little bit upset if companies are bar borrowing their design and their materials. Um, but <laughs> I, I have some crashes that I'll show you, and you know it just. You saw how dirty it was, and it was because I was just flinging it all over the place, and I would sometimes get out of shape. You know, it's not my favorite radio. Uh, I don't think the sticks are quite as smooth as I would like to have. Of course, it's a little bit different size radio than my preferred radio. So sometimes I wouldn't be as precise as I normally would be, or maybe I just wasn't paying attention. You never know at my age. And I would whack things. I'd get hung up in the trees and bushes and just different things but I don't have a lot of crashes I'm going to show you I'm just going to show you the most dramatic crashes which actually now to think of it in the little quick snippet I already showed you uh, one of the more well the most dramatic crash when I uh, got tangled up in that tree over the cabana and then I came crashing down uh, that had to be the most dramatic one that I had uh, but I've got I think it's two others that will play after the slow flight here uh, by the way at the end of that flight I just have a really hard time pressing that button when I reach for that button with my finger, even though my finger is resting on that button when I go to depress it, I just pitch forward. I have to really concentrate. That's one of the reasons why I prefer uh, stick switches on my radios. It's just, you know, I'm an old dog getting a, a new trick and being able to disable with the buttons, it's just not working. Even back when I first got uh, the Tango 2, which was before Express LRS was even a thing, I just had a lot of troubles uh, disarming. And for me in flying micros, that's really important to disarm pretty quickly when you have a crash or you get hung up in something. But I thought it was funny and I wanted to share it with you and that's why I chose that flight. Uh, so we're watching the slower flight, again on the 1300 milliamp 6S Cotter battery. And I have the pool cover off and uh, you know, little daredevil action there. No, not really. I mean, I, at this point, actually I did the slow flights first. Um, I was super confident in everything, you know, I'm not flying at range, I'm not flying a long way, it's been very reliable, I haven't had any weird oddity things, you like, you, you plug in a battery and a motor twitches a little bit unusually or something like that, none of that stuff happened. Oh, but I, I forgot one detail when we started this slow flight, the winds on this day, the winds are in the mid-20s with gusts in the upper 20s to low 30s. Of course, as I always say, we're in town, we're in the backyard, we have trees with leaves now, and houses that are protecting us from the full effect of that wind but uh, you can definitely hear the wind and if you're looking up at the trees maybe before we started the flight uh, you would definitely see them blowing around and again at 426 grams with this powertrain and this tune not a problem flying in these winds and that is also impressive I think it does come out, I think it was already earlier in the video, that the wind with a descent that I had in the slow flight, you could see a little bit of a micro vibration in the camera. And that brings me to another point. In all the flight footage with the O3, 
there's no stabilization. Uh, Rocksteady or EIS is not turned on, so the video is not stabilized in any manner. I didn't pass it through Gyroflow or any other stabilization software. This is just native video uh, out of the camera into my editor for the purposes of putting together this video. So the slow flight goes on for quite a while. Let's scoot towards the end. Uh, this is the DVR footage, by the way. Uh, this is as close as I can get to telling you what it looks like in the goggles, which with the O3, and it just it, it looks really good to me. Now, some of you would probably still want to have, you know, some specific external HD camera if you're shooting professionally, uh, which this has a mount for, and you can definitely do that. I don't know what sort of camera you would want to use, but. You know, for professional shoots, you probably established your expertise and knowledge on how you like things to look and how your clients like, so you do it. Uh, let's move forward towards the end of this slower flight so you can get a read on all the data. Okay, so you can see the battery warning is flashing, and unfortunately my uh, storage full is also on screen, so it's not recording on the VTX anymore. Uh, but this flight is going on for 9 minutes and 33 seconds. I should land about now, so 9 minutes and 36 seconds. Uh, unfortunately for me, I'm not really used to flying 6S. 6S batteries kind of fall off a cliff near the end, and so when you get down to that, that 3.4 volts per cell, you need to hustle home and get home. You'll see here that even though I have juice, uh, look how low the battery voltage is now. You know, it's 9.53 on the flight time, but my poor battery is at 3.1, well, popped up to 3.2. So that is, I needed to land at probably 9 minutes and 30 seconds, or thereabouts. Uh, so there's no affiliate link with this. Uh, you just go over to autotherc.com and you can buy any of their products. But I will put a link down in the video description to make it easy. So you can just tap it and you can go over there and take a look at uh, the XI35 Pro HD or any of their other products. And I would encourage you to do so because if this is anything like the other products, if you want a smaller size sort of sin whoop because they do specialize in sin whoops, I suspect they all fly really well too. But... I haven't reviewed them yet, so I can't be definitive about that. Let's cover the rest of this. Okay, so first things first, uh, no damage. Uh, you had an opportunity already to see that. I guess if you want to call it damage, <laughs> dirty, and maybe are the props even dinged up? They got grass and leaves stains on them, but I don't even see where the props are dinged up. Got some mud and stuff. Needs a, needs a good brushing. Uh, get some of the schmutz off of there. Yeah, no, no, no damage at all. Uh, one thing I did notice, and I'm going to get a screwdriver out here. Unfortunately, the one thing I have to complain about... Oh, is it not in there? Oh, I got the wrong size of hex. So the one thing I would like for them to do is to add a little thread locker on these screws. Uh, because these go into metal standoffs, so we have metal on metal, and we know, regardless of how smooth all the components are and how good the tune, we're going to have vibrations. And one of my flights, when I came home, I did find about half of this screw sticking out of the bottom. If we had a little thread locker on there, that would take care of it. I appreciate the fact that they have an accessory bag that includes various screws that you might need. But if we just put a little bit of thread locker on these, it will really mitigate those vibrations that could uh, cause this to loosen up. And ultimately, depending upon which screw it is, that could give us a flight problem. Um, I don't know, I can't point to something specific of course, we don't want to do that on our prop screws, but these other screws, I think we do want to have a little bit of thread locker on there. Something that was interesting uh, that I took note of, um, they have these uh, standoffs that are branded. Let me zoom in. So they've got some, I don't know if that's etching or if that's paint or a sticker that's on the outside of that metal post, but uh, something that I thought was interesting on both sides, this side as well as this side, they made sure that their name was facing out. It wasn't turned, you know, it's not 10 degrees off, it's not around the side. They got their name on there and they want it shown proudly and they made sure when they built it that it was set that way. We have hex screws all the way around this quad, so if you're just using a hex driver set, uh, you're all set to go for repairs. I didn't find any Phillips or any other screw types. Uh, we do have some recess, which is smart right along where our battery will go, uh, right through here, and the battery pad is cut out, so you have access to those without having to tear off the battery pad. Uh, even up front here, where your battery might come up forward, which it actually does, because it's a it's a big honkin' 6S battery, uh, they've got those recessed here, so you've got the clearance. They also added a little tiny washer to the backside of the camera holder here, the little 
Cyclops cat, I think. And uh, it did come with this bolt already in to hold your external HD camera. Oh, up front, we have a couple more standoffs with the Out of the RC name facing us. So that attention to detail was also paid. I wanted to also highlight it for those that might like colors on your motors. We got a little bit of a purple and silver motif. Sometimes when I get the light on it, that silver on the top looks more like a gunmetal gray, and then it looks more chrome around the bell. And I do think these are two-piece bells, if that matters to you. Uh, we do see here we have those sleeves, those plastic sleeves. Um, and we've mentioned that one time before, at least, that over time the adhesive apparently wears out on these. And so you might need to get yourself some motor wire tape, tape, tape that I call Emacs tape that I do link way down in the video description. I think it's labeled as a name of Emacs tape. You can get it from Emacs and I also have a link down there to Amazon. I mentioned it, so I thought we should take another look at it. So their prop protection is real low profile. And then they've got this uh, flaring out, I just kind of want to call it. There's must have been where I hit the chimney over here. But this was something that I first saw on the Darwin FPV Sin Ape. And we've since seen it on, I think, one or two other quads. But this appears from what I can find using the Wayback Machine uh, on the internet to go back and look at products on the Auto the RC page you know, back a year or two. Uh, this seems to be a pretty consistent design that they have come up with. So they may have been first. And unfortunately, with coming first, they broke some new ground and some other people saw that and said, hey, we should use that design too. <laughs> Not really funny, but you know that seems to be the way this stuff works in our hobby. We're, we're always exchanging ideas, so to speak. Oh, we've got some more etching back here on the back. We've got Art of the RC and their elephant. I believe that's an elephant, right? That's what I see when I look at it. And the name of the quad, the XI35 Pro. And it's interesting that they chose to go with aftermarket antennas because, um, you know, the O3 system is so good. I don't even know how necessary these are. But if you find that you like aftermarket antennas on your O3 air units, it's already taken care of. It comes as standard part of the package. I also mentioned your limited camera angle. And uh, I had it all the way up to the top, as you can see here, as I've shown it all the way through the video. Uh, my flight, I can't even... Uh, my slower flight was probably about right there. So there's not a lot of camera angle that you know it comes with by default. Of course, you could redesign this mount. You can model it and then increase the hood another 10 or 15 degrees, whatever suits your fancy. But uh, for me, I think that's one of the other things. I'd like to see thread locker on the metal screws, and I'd like to see a canopy that allows for a little bit more camera angle. But tell me if I'm wrong on that. Am I asking for more than's necessary? Am I just looking for things to complain about? Or is that something as someone, if you're interested in a product like this, is that one of the features or one of the details you're looking for? is the ability to raise the camera angle to not the full extent, you know, you don't need to go vertical, but you know, you, not everybody flies the same camera angle. And this to me, that looks like maybe 20, 25 degrees. So not bad, but what if you want to go 30? What if you want to go 27? I guess you could maybe poke a hole in that and move the camera forward. And then you're a little bit more exposed. That's something else to talk about. So maybe that's the reason behind this cat design. <laughs> I keep calling it cat design. Maybe it's not a cat design, but that's what I see when I look at it. Um, so this little top mount piece, almost like the roof of a house, is thicker right up here. So hopefully if we go headlong into a tree, that gives us a little bit more of a protection uh, against breaking on the uh, O3. Of course, if you bring the camera angle down a little bit and you put like a clear UV filter over that, that would also be a good thing. The O3 has these little flarings out that would do something, but probably not really protect it too much. Um, you can see that with the post in front of the camera, regardless of camera angle, if we happen to hit something that's wide enough to hit both of these or at least one of these, that should keep it you know, from damaging our camera straight on. But there's a lot of angles when we're flying that if we come into something that fits in between those two front posts, we could get some camera, camera damage. But to me, I think they have designed this with the purpose of providing a little bit more as well as holding the camera well and still being able to adjust the camera angle without the need of tools. Something else that was pretty interesting when I started looking into this company, if you go to their website, autothertc.com, and you look, 
they're flying this or one of their other products in what seems like to be a public place and they're flying it around. And I was surprised that the people just kind of would just see the quad flying around and just didn't seem to care. Now it could be actors, could be, but uh, take a look at that. I was a little bit surprised. You know, I'm a fairly risk averse person and I thought, you know, at least one person within the group of people they were flying amongst would be a little bit annoyed, but it didn't seem like it. And I thought that was pretty cool and surprising. As far as the uh, XI35 Pro HD, good job out of the RC. It's a good one. If you're interested in the XI35 Pro and what you've seen in this video, I would encourage you to go down to the link in the video description. Again, it's not an affiliate link or anything like that. It's just a link to help get you over to autofthrc.com, which you can type in your web browser if you want yourself. Check out the XI35 Pro HD, or if you're interested in one of their other products, they're all there for you to view. But I had a good time. And this will be the new standard to beat on this channel for three and three and a half inch. Cine whoops. Cine whoops. I always say it wrong. Everybody always tells me I get it wrong. As long as we know what we're talking about, right? I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at the XI35, uh, I keep, the name, get the name right, okay.